Welcome back to Trinidad and Tobago. And we shared with you the video footage yesterday. We broke the story about the Venezuelan nationals uh, who were found in Carinage yesterday. 19 persons, including six females and three minors, uh, not in Carinage. All are in immigration custody. 18 Venezuelan nationals attempted to sneak into the country. Uh, if you missed uh, the video, this is what uh, we shared with you yesterday morning. Uh, images of police authorities uh, making their way uh, to Carinage this morning. So uh, yesterday morning, that is. And there you see uh, some of the incidents there of what transpired. Uh, those are the nationals who were held. Uh, some of the women as well all have been detained and are in police custody. At this time, joining us on the Morning Brew to continue our discussion surrounding this matter, Yasina Gonzalez and uh, attorney at law, Kristen Williams, as we look at uh, the possible human rights violations. We do know that there was an amnesty uh, which saw the registration of 14,000 plus Venezuelan nationals. And that figure continues to be in contention. Whether or not you believe it or not, the point is that persons are still fleeing uh, from the South American nation. Good morning. How are you both? Good morning, Hima. Good, good, good morning. Now, you see, let me ask you, let's start with you. You see this footage there of persons sneaking into the country, attempting to get in. Are the, are, is the illegal trade still continuing? Are more and more Venezuelans still attempting to come in the country? Well, as I say all the time, it's depression. So people will be continuing coming in. It's depression in Venezuela. It's a crisis which... I believe that uh, the government should really allow the humani humanitarian law to come into, into reality so these things will not just get, will get worse, you know? Is it, let me ask you, you recently returned from Venezuela. Yes. Tell me what are you saying because, you know, a lot of times the media, uh, particularly state media, has said that what we are saying that is happening is clearly not happening. Well, I could tell you one thing. When I went to Venezuela, there is no beast. It's just U.S. If you don't have U.S., you can't buy anything. You, the business disappear. So that is to tell you how bad it is. And, but then there, there's sort of an alternative world where you see that the well-to-do are continuing to live very opulent lifestyles. Well, you know, um, th there is uh, the people who are um, just surviving there. And they're just basically surviving. Remember, a lot of the people have left Venezuela r running away from persecution and, and the crisis. So, you know, basically you will do a picture of people who will be employed, but they're just trying to be strong and trying to stand strong. But they have been separated from the family. Some of them, they separated from their children. It is a big crisis. Of course, when you're going into a hotel, it's a different life together. But when you're going outside there, it, it is terrible. There is no water, seeing a story. There there is no food, no medication, the hospital suffering tremendously. And the sad thing about it is that people will continue running away because if you're going on the street, you see some young people there, they're just basically doing nothing. There is no job. There is nothing in Venezuela for them. Now, Kristen, you have been uh, assisting with this plight, and I know that you represent a number of persons. The possibility now is that these persons will be immediately uh, returned to the country that they've come. They've entered the country illegally. The amnesty is over. Some people emailed yesterday to say, Hema, this is a human rights violation. I what exactly agree. is happening? Um, well, Hema, I do totally agree that this is a human rights violation. And it may be wrong to say that the entry is per se illegal. Why? Because should persons from Venezuela be seeking to become a refugee? Trinidad and Tobago, we are guided by the 1951 convention and protocol relating to the status of refugees. And that convention basically, it prohibits any penalties or crimes or offenses by persons that are seeking refugee status in Trinidad. So therefore, it will be wrong to detain them, for example, to return them to the homeland, and unless it is that we are saying that the policy adopted by the government will be that in contravention to the 1951 Convention on Human Rights. No, then, then the flip side, domestic policy will always trump international policy or international conventions. And the government will say that, one, they have the right to refuse entry to anyone attempting to enter uh, within this space. It's at the discretion of the immigration authorities. If they feel as though a law is, broke, is being broken or that this person may be a possible threat to national security. Well, to answer your question, um, the latter part of your question in that persons who are seeking to be refugees, they may be denied that particular status, save and accept on the grounds of national security and public policy order. Now, governments, for example, worldwide, they may have um, 
assumes with respect to refugees and the socioeconomic impact that they that refugees um, tend to put the country at risk of. Mm -hmm. However, Trinidad and Tobago being a signatory to the 1951 Convention, we must respect persons that have claimed refugee status and are so recognized by the United Nations um, Human Rights Convention. Now, with more and more persons entering, the government has made it quite clear that they are saying that they had the period of the amnesty, the two-week period, um, that they allow 14,000 persons to register. This country has finite resources and they cannot continue to allow persons to enter without having an idea, one, of how many persons are entering and what are they entering for. So where do we find the balance now? Um, that balance, I would say, is a very hard balance to effect. Why, for example, um, the United States, for example, they had a policy that one would call extraterritorial interceptions. So before someone who is seeking ref refugee status could enter your territorial waters, America, for example, they were seeking to stop entry into the territorial waters because once someone enters someone's territorial waters and are claiming refugee status, they are protected by the 1951 Convention, to which Trinidad and Tobago, again, is a signatory. So we're looking at the fact that these persons, what is the correct treatment for them? We don't know whether or not they were taken to the IDC, <coughs> whether yes. or not they've been put on a plane or put on a boat and sent back to Venezuela. What is the ideal <coughs> treatment for them now? The ideal treatment for them would be first and foremost, if they are claiming to be refugees or asylum seekers, to have an interview with the local arm of the United Nations um, body in Trinidad and Tobago, that would be the Living Waters. That's first. Secondly, also, as a country, we should make it abundantly clear that we ought not to run afoul of Article 33, for example, of the 1951 Convention, which prohibits refoulement of refugees. And what is refoulement of refugees? That is returning a refugee to a country where they know that they shall <coughs> suffer personally <coughs> because of religion, race, political opinions, and life. Now, you see, now, you know, there was a case, uh, in this case in particular, minors were amongst uh, those detained. Do you know where these children go? When they come here, you mean? When they leave? When they leave, when they come here, what happens to them? Well, there is nothing there in Venezuela. So they are desperate. There is no job. School, most of the school closed. There is a lot. They still have some protests in Venezuela. You're not seeing it on the, in the news all the time. But in different countries, it's, it's very dangerous there to live there. There is no food. There is nothing in Venezuela. So they just, the, the yes, the yes, any opportunity to run away, to come in, into a country like Trinidad, they're happy because that is the only way they could survive. This is people who just looking to survive. Now, Kristen, you know, there were some minors found. Yes. Uh, there were three minors, uh, and we don't know because they're tra the translators were not there at the time when our crews were there. Uh, what happens to the minors in particular who are found entering the country legally? Illegally. Illegally, yes. Yes, well, minors that enter the country illegally usually, from, well, from my experience thus far, they are usually accompanied by a parent or a parent who may go to the shores of some part of the country to receive the children. However, they are then subjected to orders of supervision by the immigration department. Now, <laughs> we don't know whether or not these minors were trafficked. We don't know whether they are coming here to... We, we don't know. So how does the investigation begin? Because you really, you have minors, you don't know if their parents are bought that craft, you don't know if they have family here that are waiting for them. You really don't know. So would the authorities then have to take custody of these children or would we just send them back? It may be wrong to just return a minor because then again we will be running afoul of Article 33 of the 1951 Convention. However, um, I do know that the Immigration Department, they have established a refugee de section that investigate those sort of issues with respect to minors. Yes, in terms of the <coughs> Venezuelan Trinidad Vega, we've had a couple of months that have sort of given us a breathing spirit since the registration con uh, concluded. Are things any better today? 
it does, it does the migrant population feel as though are they given rights and afforded decent treatment from Dan and Tobago? Well, I believe that it has helped a lot in the sense that some of them could go to work now and they could just, um, you know, not be afraid of the police and the immigration to arrest them and put them in jail. But basically, there is a lot of them who are here and they, 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 they was, it wasn't able to, to, to register for them yet. Uh, there is a little conflict between registration and those people who are uh, refugees and they've been protected by the by the United Nations you understand so basically they hold on to that you know but they still they arrest them they put them in jail they keep them for months you know and they just suffering inside there especially with the condition they are going to you know nobody wanted to be in jail lock up there and some of the parents are, had children they had to see about and they just been separated just like how you see in, in other country they separated the family from the children parents are just locked up there husband and wife separated and they're just there suffering inside in the, in the detention center especially the women let me ask you this uh, in terms of the raid that took place on Monday where you had a number of Spanish-speaking women found a house in uh, St. Anne's on, Ch on Lady Chancellor Road. Is that a norm? Is that the only viable option of employment that a number of these women are forced to go into? Of course, no, because remember, you have to look also the, and the human trafficking mm -hmm. issue, and then I believe that the, the authority has to deal with those things because the human trafficking is a huge problem in the world right now, and you have to protect the, those children. But then again, you know, um, the conditions and the, the crisis and everything, you see there is a lot of different things that are happening in Venezuela that are affecting Trinidad and affecting the people who are coming here. And you know, basically, you will see those things happening. It's all over the world that happening, not only in Trinidad, you understand? If, and, and another, and Another thing too, you know, the, the the thing I feel sad about it is that they arresting this woman and they keep them there for so long, separated, they don't have no communication with the family, they don't know where they are, and that is another issue. I get a lot of text messages every day in WhatsApp. People just want to know where my family, some of them say, I, I can't, I, they're not allowed them to speak to the family. So all of that is information that I basically get every day. Well, you should take that and to the children authority. also, they, there is another issue where mine have been deported by themselves. I mean, I, I, I have one case where two minors were deported to Venezuela without her parents. So that is something that he should, he, he, he will know what is the violation about that, you know? Well, no, before we this interview, uh, Kristen, I want to ask if it is, uh, the correct procedure would be to have the interview with the Living Waters and the UNHCR, if it is the government does not go that route and simply deport this because we've had situations where deportations yes. have taken place people have landed or they've been found and they've sent straight back is the government breaking the law and what is the next option or what is the option available for the venezuelan refugees the possible only refugees option available i would say at this particular stage would be the courts of trans tobago that if it is for example a refugee thinks that their rights under the convention are being infringed they ought to go to the High Court of Trinidad Tobago and let the courts make a determination as to whether or not the policies that the government has or the modus or the way of operation of the government infringes the 1951 convention. But then if they're taken there, because we don't know if yes. they're, going, they're going to seek refugee asylum when they get to UNHCR. So within that period of being detained and taken there, we don't know what's going to happen with them. No, we don't, unless they're represented by an attorney at all. In a short time. It's in a 10 seconds your closing comments on this Thank matter. You. What do you want to say to Trinidad and Tobago? Obviously, the Venezuelans continue to arrive here because of the collapse of the economic situation in Venezuela. How does the government really balance this? Well, I would say that they must have compassion for those people. There is a humanitarian crisis in Venezuela, and they have to acknowledge it is going to continue affecting Trinidad, and it's just worse in Venezuela and not, and not getting better. You know, so basically, I will have for compassion. Well, I do know that uh, those who are supportive of the Guaido uh, possible administration, there will be a massive protest that's going to take place in two weeks in Venezuela. The international community continues to look at what is taking place in the South American nation. We take a short break when we come back. Ryan Lewis joins us on the set. We talk a little bit about the TTMA as well as productivity in Trinidad and Tobago. Stay with us.